Where are log transcripts? All right, beautiful. Well, welcome. Nice to see everybody today. Ah, fantastic to be here. Um, let's see, let's start with our agenda and uh, kind of get, go around and make sure we have consent on what we're covering today and why I'll maybe share my screen to start that process. All right. Beautiful forest. Well, thanks for being here despite unexpected uh, opportunities with your laptop. Okay, so what, what I was, um, depending on who was going to be here today, where I was going to head was we have, um, I think, an interesting opportunity to turn the corner here. So um, I was, I was going to maybe uh, move towards some, um, some general updates uh, that people might be aware of, not be aware of. And then I was going to work towards translating the full planning exercise into a six week schedule um, and then talk about teams, partnerships, et cetera. So, so what I was, where I was thinking we would go, um, we did our uh, needs and offers workshop a couple of weeks ago. We then did some full planning and got uh, an interesting Miro board starting with people's logic and intuition on on kind of the order and sequencing. And, and I think we're ready to kind of turn towards some more um, execution. And we've had some some meetings this week that I'll, I'll fill everybody in on. Um, but that's kind of where I was thinking we might go. Is there anything else that is, um, any issues or anything else, especially top of mind that anybody would um, like to spend time on today? Jordan, I wonder if we want to discuss the poll planning exercise a little bit. I, I hesitate to say retro, but. Uh, yeah, a debrief, is that a lighter word? De debrief is good, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, Wendy. Um, I have a contribution to make because I spent quite a lot of time with Dave Snowden's troop and the there's a, a very simple way of um, looking at some of the competing priorities that I think could be useful, whether that's shared now in detail or not. But it's a really easy way of starting to compare things that could take resources um, in terms of what's most easily actioned and what is a, a sort of longer term and harder thing. So if we can't break something down, if it's not broken down, Properly, it will be a way of showing that state. Okay, that would be great. I think um, so. I would certainly see uh, value in pulling that in. Would the group be okay? Maybe between uh, debriefing on the the poll planning and going into translating that into action, um, that would be a great slot to um, pull in what you've been yeah, learning so and working with this week, Wendy. Um, if you're still up on the Maro board, maybe we could share that link because it will be easier to um, to show on the Maro board. Yeah, yeah. Let's um, so let's finish up our let's finish up our topics, and then we'll come back to that in a little bit if that's okay. And I'll I'll share the the mirror link out, and we can. Uh, Jonathan, do we want to debrief on the needs and offers? What are plans for that? And what are um, missing ingredients? We could. We had a special workshop to debrief right. on that. So I think we have a different node of energy on that. Okay. But um, okay. so I'm not sure we'd want to rehash that here. But okay. we should. Um, I will just say, uh, make sure we add needs and offers uh, flow into six-week schedule. Thank you.
Okay. Any other uh, things that people are feeling compelled to spend time on today? Okay, beautiful. So we'll so we'll dive in. Let's um. Would I let's start with uh, just general updates? Um, one thing that um, we've been talking about for a bit. This is um, this is the first time that uh, I've tried to do something like this, which is um, gather energy across networks with people that are really busy. Um, and so, one of the things that I'm realizing I have a limitation on is my ability to communicate updates that keep everybody in the loop of how much is happening. Um, so there's so much exciting stuff that's happening that nobody knows about. Um, and I think that's, that's a problem. Um, so I'm not sure I'm going to, I'm going to put that under, um, issues is how to, um, how to fix communication flows, keep everyone in the loop. Um, but just some, just some general updates. Um, so we have a certain amount of energy in a core group that can meet on um, that can meet on Wednesdays. And I think we we fairly immediately in our first weeks realized that the vast bulk of the energy is going to need to be moving outside of weekly meetings and small teams. Um, so that would be another issue is what is the nature of our Wednesday meetings? How should they change? We might not spend time on that today. Um, a few things that are happening um, that I just, just love to loop everybody in on. Um, so we are then participating in a group called uh, Future Capital that's going to be working with backing from the UN to set up um, contests and funds around the global goals, um, working groups, all that good stuff. So a very parallel stream of energy. Um, and it's looking like those are continuing to, to come together um, fairly well. And so we'll have more clarity on that um, over the coming time, but maybe I'll make a, a topic here. Let's see, updates. Maybe there's a sub note on that that's partnerships. Um, So we'll, we'll kind of look at how that continues to develop, but that's an opportunity um, where we're, we're talking and we'll be discussing with their leadership team coming up how to kind of combine streams of energy, but it's an opportunity to significantly expand the, the network of energy and funds engaged in the big, bigger picture that we're, we're all moving to. So that's really exciting. Um, that's maybe been taking, it's a big enough one that it's probably been taking 30 30, 40% of my time and energy to um, figure out whether that's the most significant and helpful way to move towards um, those capital flows and things. So I've been spending um, roughly half my time kind of trying to sort out those the capital world that we needed to do next. Um, and, it, and it looks like that's gonna be an exciting opportunity. I want to give that update. Um, Wendy and I, um, met with, uh, with John and with Zeke and with Vincent this week. Um, there's a group of people that now has block time on the tech side and is um, wondering how they can help more. And um, so we're gonna get into a little bit more of a, um, let's see, so I'm gonna put a note here called Teams, Tech Team, um, Architecture Team. Um, so, so we had uh, kind of our, our first meeting there just with those few people that are wanting to actually spend some more time coordinating energy on the technology development front. Um, so that's kind of a significant milestone just because we've got some, some block of time there that'll force us to look at how we fill out our PM backbone and how we know what we're prioritizing time to and why. Um, our social architecture has been team has been meeting, um, shifting focus towards um, onboarding. So we worked through um, worked through a couple sessions on formation, um, that's shifting towards onboarding. That will hopefully um, 
help inform the work of the tech team. And then, um, and then what's what, what's obviously been lacking that we just need to catalyze at some point is um, is getting kind of a, a better core group, or not a better core group, but a consistent core group meeting each week to to help tie these threads and communicate out and across the teams and different things. So we have um, plus 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 on these teams, but I just wanted to. Um, just highlight a couple nodes that are working. Um, Pete's continuing to move the, the wiki team forward. Um, the resourcing team's con uh, continuing to meet weekly, et cetera. So those are kind of some of the key things that are moving. Um, where I, I sense we have the opportunity to go now that we have some dedicated energy in these nodes is we need a little bit more coordination. And so that's kind of, um, where I was hoping we could start to take the pull planning into a somewhat structured six week schedule so that everybody can have a consistent weekly view of kind of what's happening and why. Um, Pete, I think it would be interesting for us to talk about the minimum communications that we might want out of the different teams to create, create that level of visibility. We'd cry nail pretty simply on a super minimum viable level. Um, so on this uh, six week schedule, what is the basic minimum communications between teams? Um, also, uh, Michael Linton and Open Money, um, there was an emerging note of energy around community currencies. Um, so, Michael has offered his his team up to host a um, a game or experiment for um, that would run for about thirty days. It would it would require about three hours of commitment um, over that thirty days for the people engaged in the experiment, maybe ten minutes a day or something with a couple sessions. Um, but to so that we could uh, get our heads into an experiment around um, what a community currency might look like how we start to measure and acknowledge flows of time. Um, so those, those are a couple of the, the basic updates. Uh, another one would be, um, would be trips. So uh, Jordan, Elu, Graham Boyd, um, who's very much part of the, the network, hasn't been on these calls, are heading to Estonia uh, next Friday. Um, so we've got an opportunity to meet with um, different leaders over there. It looks like there will be a lecture or two at a university, um, including a meeting with the foreign minister and, you know, different people and um, different sectors over there. So that could yield some interesting opportunities at kind of a, at kind of a nation state type level to look at what we're doing across the network with multiple nodes, how it connects with um, what a country like Estonia might, might be doing. Um, so we're really starting to flush out. So through something like the future capital, we're looking at partnerships at kind of a global highest level of abstraction towards something like the global goals. With a trip like Estonia, we're, we're reaching out and connecting to a small nation state and seeing how things uh, thread and whether there's any value we could provide. Um, there's an emerging node of, um, I guess I'm going to call this uh, sector energy. There's an emerging uh, node of energy that's already always present around regenerative ag with Forrest and um, Klaus and others. So there may be an experiment to run there on the sector level, um, all the way down to another area. Um, I've mentioned to you guys that group we're working with Afri within Africa. So we've settled on education as a first uh, entry point into the system. So that's gonna be um, working with uh, two to four schools as prototypes to extend learning to those who need it. Um, so we've got a really interesting group over there. Um, including a couple, uh, a couple schools that are running sub-university level, um, as well as, a, as someone who's working at a local university there. Um, so we've got great opportunities to kind of look at education all the way from 
preschool through university level education across um, multiple cultures and how those kind of set. Um, and then the last one I'll layer in, in here is maybe individual energy. Um, and so we've got this node that um, we are somewhat pursuing with Jonathan, Jonathan, Bill, Forrest, Jordan on how we set up um, individual contributions. Um, so looking at how we can do the minimal thing, um, like Pete's been testing out with Plex, uh, maybe using Patreon or different things, maybe something better than that um, for people who are doing valuable things for the for the community to be individually acknowledged and have some immediate cash flows. So I think that's kind of the updates I wanted to give, but there's a, there's a whole bunch of those things that advance every single week that um, I think a lot of the group's not in the loop on, that's a problem. Um, so we can kind of talk about um, Forrest, yeah, or Judy next Friday is uh, September 9th, correct? So those are some of the, I guess, general updates I just wanted to give to provide context going into the board week session. Wendy. Thanks, Jordan. I'm. Thank you so much for the update. I love hearing. You know, I've said that before. I love hearing what's going on um, across the team. I'm wondering um, whether this is the right space. In let me say this differently. I think we should have a space where we can each reflect and contribute um, other pieces that may be related or interrelated on the stuff that you just said, um, yeah. because. You just gave us your perspective on all that. And then I have my perspective on all that, as well as some stuff that I have held back on bringing in, not because I'm afraid to, but just because I'm waiting for the right time, right? So potentially it's the right time and I'm hearing echoes of other things. So instead of these, what I'm proposing through having this space is that it allows these particular projects or 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 um, energy to start as it's starting to collect, to also yep. gather things. I know Judy's brought this to mind and Wendy E has brought this to mind where we need to make sure we're also gathering all the other resources within the team or that's in, you know, tier one just outside um, to make yep. sure that it's all core, you know, start to help coordinate it so that um, it's a little less in parallel. So even the yep. game, you know, running a game, I, I, I feel like in our community, there's, you know, 10, 10 or 12 people who probably would be avidly interested in that particular experiment and even maybe have some really, you know, a wealth of, of expertise in helping to, you know, advance it further or make the experiment richer or make it reach more people or depending on what their needs are. So to me, this is a, that's what I hope for in these meetings, but I'm not going to presume that that's what we need to do with this meeting. I just think there needs to be a space for it. Yeah, I think I think that's perfect, Wendy. And and let's let's start modeling it during this update section. So I, I that's where I was going to like to go next was to um, we all have a view from our mast of the different things that are moving, as I guess Pete calls it. Um, so let's spend. I think before we get down to the six week schedule part, that would be awesome to fold in the other updates from around the field. So Wendy, do you want to? Do you want to add in your threads of energy here? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, there's too many. <laughs> so let me give me give me okay. there, take, give me a couple seconds. I, I okay, wonder, so, um, mm -hmm. Wendy, I, I, and Jordan, thanks for kind of making space for it here. I, I think what it sounded like Wendy was asking for was some something with even more space, um, okay. more space than we can fit into the next ten or fifteen minutes. I, I um, agree. Yep. And I don't know if that's another meeting parallel to this one with that's all about updates or if it's each of these teams has an internal update. And then um, in Agile, you, in Scrum, you do a Scrum meeting with the, the team and then Scrum of Scrums where you have somebody reporting out from each team into a, a bigger meta team. I don't know what that is, but I, I think I think it's a good idea to, to take 10 or 15 or 20 minutes or whatever right now, but I think that doesn't answer the, the full need. Doesn't answer the question. Okay, so 
this that is where the, thank you pete that was the reason for my pause it's like where do i begin that's succinct and will actually advance today's conversation versus taking it to the depth that it really needs to go i so totally I'm gonna, what pete brought in as and wendy as well in terms of tiering the level of information that needs to be communicated out to us similarly tiering what needs to be communicated out to more extended networks understanding where decisions need to be taken or whether there are issues that others could help address within a given core group of people. Um, some work on communication infrastructure would be very timely and a good investment at the front end rather than kind of band-aiding along the way to get into the full process. Okay, this is, this is beautiful. So this to me, the last four minutes have felt the most like a working team I think since we started this. <laughs> so I just want to <laughs> celebrate that. Um, so that's where I was hoping we would start to turn after the big, big stuff. So this is like exactly perfect. So we've got this little issue log started down here. And so let's let's accomplish the both and by um, getting these bullet points on the issue log about communication infrastructure, the levels of information and, and what the, so we've captured those here. And then when we when we get through whatever level of updates, we can kind of share a high level in the next 10 or 20 minutes. And then we move to the look ahead schedule. We'll start to block out these different areas of work and look at how we could advance them. So for instance, something like communication infrastructure can be opened up on the six week schedule as something that needs to be acted on. And then we can kind of assign concrete steps to that. Um, so that's kind of, so, so, 100% agree with everything that was just shared. So let's just kind of see how far, why don't we give us ourselves till, um, let's give ourselves 20 minutes here till, till 120, um, just to kind of get the, get the lay of the land, share updates um, and get the whole shape of what's out there right now before we, we advance. Yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna put in another thought here that's emerging for me. Um, I actually would need to do some prep <laughs> to effectively and quickly give an update on all the stuff that's happening on my side. I don't feel like I can do it very effectively right now just because there's so many threads. Um, and so I'm just, I'm feeling that way. I could take a stab at it, but I feel like I'd be missing some key pieces along the way. Um, I'd absolutely be 100% in for that to bring it to the next meeting. I'll totally, um, totally leave that up to your discretion, Wendy. And as we get into kind of working through things, you can just start weaving, weaving things casually. So. I'd feel no pressure to be complete. Um, my intuition would be that if we got 30% of what was in your head, it would be better than zero. Um, so I'd encourage you just to kind of offer up pretty freely whatever key things as they align. And then over the coming weeks, we'll, we'll flush out the rest of the tapestry. Bill? Yeah, I think it's, probably about time that we really take seriously our need to have a coordination director for communications. Jordan, you can't do that because you're getting so wrapped up in so many things and you know, you're going to be gone on this trip there. It's so good what's happening with you, but it seems like if we had somebody who understood all the technology that we use to communicate and could be a an aggregator of information and a disseminator and help people connect together. Some of us who have better knowledge of the technologies that we use to communicate and some of us who don't. And then another thing about Wendy, um, Wendy, I'm gonna address, speak directly to Wendy, but this is for everybody too. Wendy, when Jordan and I started working together on this four years ago, we, um, developed an understanding between us that when we would write something for editing between the two of us, the one writing the first draft would not have to present a fully formed, polished piece. We took the 80-20 rule 
into very serious consideration and we made it a practice. So we wouldn't expect something polished. We wouldn't say, hey, you, I thought you were gonna put, put out something really important here. And yet it was very hodgepodge. We accepted that because when you do 80, 20 iterations, you move so quickly to excellence. So I would write a draft that was 80% okay. And I'd send it to Jordan and he'd just go back on it and he'd give it an 80% editing or vice versa. He starts with him, comes to me. And at the second iteration or the first edit, you already reach 96% of efficacy and polish. So to have to prepare something um, with a high level of development and polish is good in some settings, but we found that if, if we had this understanding that we weren't looking for that, we could so quickly get things done. And maybe we need to talk about that as a group here, because if somebody is um, wanting to present something, if they think that they have to have it fully polished, they're used to what happens in many corporate settings in America where, hey, you're going to put out a a deal, it better be a good presentation or you're just gonna be shot down. You know, so that's, I have Can other I, things yeah. I wanna talk about in a little while, but that's it for now. Yeah, can I just jump in just to clarify? Thank you, Bill. I mean, it's such an important sentiment and I just need to clarify that's not actually not my hesitation at all. My hesitation wasn't in feeling, I, I mean, most of the stuff that I offer up, I know, I, like I almost offer it with an, with an absolute understanding that it's never complete. <laughs> We're not right. So I can, I understand my hesitation is simply in that I'm, I, I am, tr we're talking about this earlier today um, in another group. And for me, it's about clarity, right? Of I'm, I'm, since I'm an idea weaver and I'm an ecosystems weaver, looking at the larger picture, what's important to me is to offer up the pieces in conversation with us that advance this conversation, that overlap and create patterning with the other people in the room. Otherwise, I could talk for three days about all the things that are that are interconnected and all the possibilities. So it simply meant that I need time to collect my thoughts about and, and sense into what's the most alive to bring into the room right now because I have my toe in too, you know, too many places actually right now. Um, and so that was more what I meant is that I wanna present something that, mm -hmm. that is cohesive and helps to clarify and doesn't just add more data to the pile. Yeah, none of this goes without saying. So it's important that we say all these things so we communicate well, thanks. Judy? I would... I want to make sure I'm unmuted. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure that I think everything that's coming up is really appropriate. There's some triaging that can be done in each of the groups too, so that you flag as need to need to say now. It's it's good. It's a good update, but we don't need to hear it right now because no action is needed. Um, so we might want to think about a hierarchy of the communication needs as opposed to the content as a whole in order to keep things moving with the best flow with good information, knowing you can always go back with more questions if something is not clear. But if help is needed Tuesday, we don't wanna to have to work hard to get that information over several days if the time, timeline is essential. But I think we need to build in this concept of efficient and effective communications at all levels. And that means that things happen within a team, but the team agrees what's coming out of the team. It's individual, it can come from the individual. It doesn't have to be polished. The group will help polish it or ask questions that will lead the individual to some additional considerations in doing the work to get it polished. Yeah, beautiful. Love, love that idea. Um, beautiful. Wendy? Um. Right, so my thought here is that this information is never going to be stable. Um, and so having it in a rough form, even if it's not curated, at least gives people the opportunity to browse. If, if it involves, and this is, I think, where we have to have some heuristics at least, and probably quite a bit of trust, 
some of the um, relationships and such that are represented by the people are ones that are, have taken a lot of time to negotiate. Um, and so, you know, you don't want people necessarily approaching different opportunities willy nilly, but just to be aware that something like that exists just allows us all to do our own little part of the work. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, that's where we could use something like SenseMaker because people could just say, you know, this opportunity looks roughly like X. And then, you know, we could have, um, you know, if you know those sort of heat maps I've been showing you, we could say, well, it looks like we need to be looking at this sort of realm territory on our larger map um, so that we can then say, well, at the moment, who's got what or where have those things gone? which would allow us just to see where the heat is. If there's a lot of stuff on education and there's a lot of stuff on, you know, community resilience, is there a lot of stuff on regen agriculture? Um, where are we just placing our interest at the moment? And then we wouldn't have to try and, we wouldn't have to pro provide anything that was more than a rough shape. Um, and yeah. then we could ask someone to present the things in this particular area. It's a pot, it's quite easy to do. It's actually not hard to do. I could basically do it in an hour or two for for general areas, as long as we're prepared to just categorize things a couple of different ways. So you could see it with this hat on or that hat on, whether it's generally to do with, you know, money or generally to do with research, for example. But I know those two intersect fairly quickly. <laughs> Uh, Judy, is that a new hand or an old hand? Oh, sorry, I'll get it down. Okay. Um, Wendy, I just did a really rough copy and paste of your your notes from the chat in. Um, yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, so I mean, I could talk about each one and talk. So that was me organizing my thoughts really fast. <laughs> then it was, yeah, I could talk about how I think each one intersects with what you already added to maybe bring them together so they're not just separate. Um, and then we could just, I mean, to me, it's, it's there's more, right? There's more here. There's yep. research that's been done. There's connections that have been made. That's what Wendy Elford's talking about. There's um, people having side meetings that have absolutely nothing to do with Meta Project, but always have something to do with Meta Project that could find their way e in with, with this kind of focused attention on, on particular projects. So, my dream is that we we start to together um, as a navigation group start to see where the patterns overlap. Are we all really working on regenerative agriculture? This is what Wendy Elford was just saying. Are we, you know, all really leaning towards regenerative agriculture right now? Wow. Well, then we should capitalize. Meta project as a we should capitalize on that mm -hmm. and and focus in and 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 communicate out to the group. This seems like a thing. Who else has some has a piece around regenerative agriculture? Um, and and let's see what we can draw together. Um, you know, we have there's stuff happening over in Winfinity. Trey's here today, right? So that has to do with collaborative decision making, and that is a piece that's been brought up a lot um, that has already been advanced greatly in in when in the Winfinity space. So instead of us re and this goes back to what Judy was saying. Instead of rehashing some pieces, we check off some pieces and start to draw in the partnerships and the collaborations that we need in order to advance some of these pieces. Um, so I'm, I'm loving this. This is, I think, um, the clarity that I'm looking for. I could use a lot more of it. <laughs> I'm happy to contribute to this kind of effort in whatever way I can. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just to, to build real quickly on what you're saying, um, We've said this before and it bears repeating almost always is that each piece we've needed to accomplish, we've been able to find someone in the network who spent 10 years on it already. And so um, so that default, uh, I guess, standpoint that as we start looking at our schedule of things that need to move, we're not gonna have the default position of reinventing the wheel, but we'll have the default position of figuring out who had this put on their heart 10 years ago and has been working tirelessly on it. How can we support them and integrate the work 
but yeah. Trey, I hope you. And to me, what advances that best is the communication. And I think what I heard Bill saying is, Jordan, you, you, it's quickly becoming imperative that you not, you're not having to be the person who makes all those connections. Yeah. Um, and we can't help support Meta Project or you or each other if we don't know what's going on. I wouldn't call you a bottleneck, but <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay. Um, okay, great. So the um, this is this is beautiful. Um, Okay, who who has, um, is there anybody else that would like to give a quick seat of the pants update from their mast of the adjacent pieces or things that have been moving? Um, Pete, you're curating Plex, so if you happen to be, be able to step on. Um, I, I don't have any big updates from Plex. Well, I'm, um, okay. Or, or just... uh, and, and one quick update from the wiki team. Um, uh, we, need, uh, we need more people editing the wiki. And um, I know there's kind of a, a you know, a tech and, and uh, process hurdle to get over that, but um, I would love to help you with it. I think Bill Anderson would love to help you with that. Um, uh, I think we're going to start having, um, I, I would, I, I guess I kind of proposed in the Wiki Posse channel. Um, uh, at least every two weeks, we should have a kind of a team meeting of the Wiki team, so that we can talk a little bit better about how we're how we're wikiing together. Um, otherwise, thank you, Jordan. You're doing an amazing job with the Wiki, and and um, Jonathan, you too. Jonathan, I offer to help anybody write material. I will co-author it with you. So what Jonathan is, is saying is when, when you think to yourself, there ought to be a page on the web about this um, or a set of pages, uh, Jonathan can help you help make that happen for you. And it would be as easy as uh, chatting with Jonathan, which is always a fun thing to do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> OK, great. Okay. I, I just want to speak into the room um, in, in case I'm not alone. I'm really struggling to use Massive Wiki. Um, I'm finding it very hard to collaborate in that space. So I'm happy to give it one more go around um, for the benefit of Meta Project to try to figure out if I can, if I can, if I can, yeah, figure out a way to make it flow for me. Um, but I'm, I'm, I've tried a couple times now and I'm, and I've, and I've been doing it with Jonathan and I, and it's not Jonathan, it's just my think, my way of thinking, or it's, and it's not that I'm tech challenged in general. Um, it, it's just not. I think information helping. spaces, uh, in general are hard, uh, collaborative in, information space in general is hard. So just to structure your own personal notes using any tool is I think a struggle for most people. Yeah. So then, you know, level up a couple levels, you know, you want to do that collaboratively, you want to use a specific tool rather than um, a general tool. Um, I, can I, yeah, let me just clarify, because maybe, maybe there's an easy answer I'm not seeing. The, mm -hmm. the real sticking point for me isn't writing my own pages, although that also I need, is a little bit of a hurdle. It's more when I get to wanting feedback from other people or wanting to give feedback to other mm -hmm. people. I, 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 there's no, like I've tried hypothesis. I, it, Anyway, right. So what, to me, there's would, both yeah um, layers. Th thanks, Wendy. Um, yeah. Great, great um, thinking and and thoughts. Um, makes a lot of sense. Uh, we, my observation is we don't have essentially a feedback process for our wiki yet. We just haven't done it. Um, 
So, um, so when I said we should have more people working on the wiki, right now we barely have enough people to talk amongst each, uh, each other about, you know, how should we wiki together. So we just need more people. Um, and then having regular meetings like, um, okay, so I put this page up in the wiki. Um, uh, if we can kind of jump ahead to that idea. I put a page up in the wiki and it just laid there. Nobody wanted to touch it. I, it's not linked anywhere. I don't, how does that work? So that's a discussion that we deserve to have with each other. Um, and there's lots of ways a team might help integrate information together. We literally have not started that process to my mind. I mean, we have you know, like just like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Um, and so we're, we're it's, it's not that, I, I think it's not that it's hard then, it's that we haven't really started the process of it. And we haven't started the process of it because we're busy, we're doing a bunch of other things, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, yeah. I mean, maybe we could use your help in social architecture then because Jonathan's written a bunch of pages and I'm it's stuck there, mm -hmm. right? And he's looking for feedback. So that's what I've noticed as the people write pages, they need feedback and then mm -hmm. it stops. Um, and so um, I it, haven't it contributed. Hasn't started. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the yeah. I think that, yeah. stops, you know. Yeah, so totally it's agree. forcing me off onto other tools. And I'm literally right now trying to decide like where am I going to start building out more content? I, I think um, um I I don't I, I, I hope this doesn't sound defensive that it's not the tool, it's the information and the communication. So we're just not doing communication. We're not doing collaboration. I don't really know about your pages. So even me, right? I know a fair bit about Lionsburg Wiki. I don't know about your pages on the Wiki. I, and that's yeah, not the fault. Yeah, I haven't put any there of, yet. Yeah, that's not, uh, yeah. That's, so it's it's not the fault of the tool. Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't really matter actually if, if uh, so let's kind of take the tool off the table and, and we'll put it back on later because Massive Wiki comes with a lot of benefits and some and, and some uh, problems. Um, but it doesn't really matter too much if somebody said, I've got a bunch of stuff I want to contribute to uh, to Lionsburg and I'm going to use Google Docs or even God forbid, I'm going to use Microsoft Word or I'm going to use TextEdit or I'm going to use Miro or I'm going to use wherever the information is, once it's someplace and once people know about it, we can start the information flowing around. We can start to talk about how to get it into different places. Um, nothing has to go always through um, uh, Massive Wiki. Um, uh, anybody who's making information and making communication should put it in a place where it can be shared and you know easily gotten to. But other than that, um, you know, let's let's do more information and let's do more talking about how our information flows. I can kind of make another like a, a, a similar a similar feeling I've had for a, a, a week or two. The Mattermost channels are all over the place, and I don't know who's talking about what where anymore. And mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure that we don't have conversations in Mattermost really. Mm -hmm. We we kind of you know post a drive. Uh, you know you'll see Jonathan post something like help I need help, you know, and it kind of just sits there, you know. Um, so. Maybe we're overwhelmed. Uh, maybe we have too much stuff going on. Um, I wouldn't, it, it's tempting to say that we have too many channels of, of information flow and communication flow, but I don't think that's really the problem. The problem is that we're not enacting information flow, however that is happening, right? Um, we're kind of doing pretty good. These meetings get notate, note, note uh, taken as notes and then you know, some of us at least can find them later in the wiki or, you know, sometimes we cross post to Mattermost or something like that. Um, but it's, I think it's, it's tool agnostic. The problem is really we're not communicating enough. We're not using the tools enough. That was super helpful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Really, thank you. That's great, um, Wendy. You're muted, Jordan, and Vincent has his hand up, so I don't know if you were passing to him or. Okay, I saw I'm the gonna, mouth. Ask to Vincent, yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask a quick question. 
I'm going to ask a quick question that's mostly posed at Pete, but could be posed to anyone. Um, so let's say someone creates a um, form of documentation in Google Docs or Notion that could be in the wiki. Um, what is the current, can we spend a minute or two coming up with a like process for handling that? What do you think, Jordan? Do we feel good about spending a minute or two without? Um, Vincent, I will post anything you want into the wiki at any time. And I offer that to everybody. I'm, I'm the only other one besides Jordan that's operating on the wiki. So I'm happy to expand my role. I, I think so, so to, to, to take a minute or two, um, Vincent, it's a great question. Um, uh, one of the, so a, a place to put information is in Miro uh, or Notion. And if you think about Miro or Notion, the information kind of gets buried inside the structure of Miro or buried inside the structure of Notion. Um, so I love the fact that there's information anywhere. Um, it's, uh, it's easier to take a Google Doc and get it into the wiki. That's, that's kind of a lift and shift kind of thing that can happen semi-automatically. Getting stuff out of a Notion wiki and out of a Miro kind of like a wiki um, is is going to be more challenging. Um, having said Assuming that, assuming it's like one page, like a one page I mean, one page is, export to yeah, if, you know, uh, Markdown or if it's yeah. uh, if it's one page once, it's copy and paste, um, and then dropping a link on the wiki back to the original source probably. Um, same thing with Mattermost, right? Uh, oh wow, this is a great thread on Mattermost. Let's copy it into the wiki. Let's put a link back to Mattermost in case you want to discuss it more. Um, uh, the if if it's if it's one once copy and paste. If it's one page over and over in Notion, hey, we have a new meeting page in Notion. We have a new meeting page in Notion. That's an automatable thing. Um, uh, even if it's dense, a, a big mirror map, um, you know, it's like we're never going to get all of that with a lot of fidelity into the wiki, but let's just make a link. It's fine yeah. to make a little summary paragraph in the wiki. Here's a link to the mirror board. Hopefully the mirror board has a link back to the wiki, right? Um, and so um, between, between kind of just copying and pasting information or automating flows, we can also just link. Um, uh, so... Uh, we should do more of that. And we, we need to have, um, probably along with, uh, uh, there's, there's probably a, a bunch of things, just uh, the kind of update communication we're talking about and um, the uh, communication role that Bill was talking about, just having more, um, more thinking and more practice of making sure our information is, you know, uh, is well linked and moving around. Um, we need to do more of that. Okay, so this is um, an amazing conversation and obviously it's important and that's why we're spending time on it. So um, Pete, I hear Wendy is saying, Wendy, I heard you say that you would like a lot more of these updates and flows and we're struggling with the tools and tech. Um, Pete's saying that if we had a team together that was in consistent communication and trying to kind of get that flowing, that would probably be the missing link. Um, I'd be happy to volunteer um, time to take you up on that offer to meet every week or two, eat with a, with a group of people who's trying to nail communication flows. Um, maybe we could start with, we could maybe start with process and then see if a couple of us could take on different roles and just see if we can start practicing how we're going to do it. Thanks, Jordan. I, I, I would split that a little bit. Social architecture should be the, the team working on process flows and communication flows and making sure that things get... Right now, we're doing pretty good. Um, and Jordan, Jordan and Jonathan and Wendy, you guys are the, the best at making sure that we get things written down someplace, right? Let's write down a lot of stuff. We're still learning as a team 
to go back and even read that, right, or go back and find it wherever it is, um, know that we can find it, those kinds of things. So all of that work to me feels like uh, social architecture. And separately, I would like to see just the wiki team start meeting regularly to talk about how we wiki together. Um, uh, we we don't have a we don't really have a functioning wiki culture yet. We're you know a few people working on the wiki um, mostly separately, and we need to figure out how to work together uh, in the wiki and, and have I more people. Add a note. I love all of that. And can I just add a note since we're talking about social architecture that the priorities around social architecture right now don't allow for a lot of time um, to talk about people, communication flows. We're talking mostly, we're focusing mostly on onboarding. So we either need to reprioritize and let, right? We just can't, we're not going to get through both. So it's okay if we maybe create something in parallel to have this conversation, which again, I mean, with people, I'm just throwing that out as a as a reality. I, I, I feel like they're really aligned because if we're onboarding into some kind of a community, um, the, the, the first thing that everybody's going to wonder is about the communication and flow. So, so I think it would be worth a Absolutely. detour in the, in the um, onboarding to say, okay, oh, no, so many... it's, it's the right spot. I'm yeah, just saying yeah. with, with the amount of work we're trying to tackle and we were yeah, just yeah, that's talked just, about yeah. leadership there. We talked about the hierarchical, I mean, our last conversation was fabulous and it talked about the hierarchies needed for the projects and how we're seeing them and what we're doing, right? Which might generate some work for the, for the tech group, right? So it's just, it's, I, I'm just trying to be honest with the group that while that also feels like a very important priority there are conflicting priorities now that all feel equally as urgent. And yeah, so well, they may re require parallel conversations just to get through it in a more timely fashion. I'm just trying to be realistic, not saying it needs to be a separate group, even just saying that's, yeah. that's where we're at. Yeah, I love it. Um, to spend one more minute here, to see if we can get it to a little bit of a closure point that we could then act on. Um, Pete, I'm thinking about, so I understand that that differentiation of social, social architecture, looking at how people will use the different tool sets that are available. Um, I also see what you're saying about wiki culture and wiki team. And then you brought up one more thread, which is about like, um, matter most team slash matter most culture so it feels like um if, if like we were three weeks from now and had advanced this kind of significantly and got a little better we would have needed to probably sort out a couple of those different threads so is um so i'm wondering if we should have that team that's looking at how we wiki together also look at how we matter most together and kind of look at those different texts and how we're using them and how we're cross-referencing and getting in flow. Like even if it's just for three or four weeks, I don't know what you think about that, but um, I'm just trying to think that it's probably a lot of the same of us in both those conversations. What do you think about starting together for a few weeks and then splitting them off when we kind of have a little clarity? I. I like the idea, and, and you're probably right. It's it's probably a big overlap. Um, the um, the culture that you need to drive a, a healthy wiki, and the culture that you need, or the the and the culture you need to drive a healthy wiki, and the facilitation you need to drive effective communication through Mattermost are actually pretty different. They're 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 not the same. Um, so I I think I would keep them. I, those are separate uh, activities to me that that certainly feed each other and talk to each other, but they're it's, they're different. Okay, and the team to bridge those would be something like a communications team. Then I guess that would be the role that Bill was advocating for, as someone who really understands the different tools and is facilitating the flow. Would and you agree with that? I, I agree with that, and th and that's a you know a subgroup of social architecture, an important very important subgroup of social architecture.
Does anyone object to the idea that the communications team is a subgroup of social architecture? I think it belongs under social architecture, but then I think there's another piece of communication that actually has more to do with representation outside our group. It's yeah. a mar marketing and awareness, a, an informational dimension rather than an internal process. Okay, great. Okay, this, this is, I think, helpful articulation and um, Okay, given how much time we spent on communications today, um, it's, it's obviously a gap. Um, is there, my hypothesis is that we should take this energy, even if it's for two or three weeks into this communication sub team and meet on it a couple times and see if we could nail some basic process. So I'll, I'll volunteer to put time towards that um, is there anybody else who would have um, energy to put on that communication sub team, looking at the process, how the tools are used, and maybe like this this role that Bill was talking about, um, maybe in two or three meetings we could articulate that framework, and then we could figure out, you know, how we can resource those. I'd be willing to help with the process, but I am absolutely useless about the tools. Okay. Yeah, and I just want to throw out too. There was um, an email thread at one point about um, creating up a new, setting up a newsletter, and I put a Google Doc together. So I'll throw that in this, in this notes, in these notes. Um, and I had pointed out that Jonathan and Vincent and some other people were talking, and I think Pete too. There was some thread. It was maybe through Flotilla at one point that was talking about how do we create more of an automated newsletter that can go out to everyone. So um, to me, that internal communication piece in its, in its ideal form would land, would land there. It's kind of like the flex, it's kind of like, you know, some other, some, you know, the newsletters we all get in our inboxes. I, okay, perfect. I, I, um, I, I feel called to, to air attention. Um, uh, between relying on volunteer effort and getting stuff done, um, getting stuff done predictably. Um, so we have a couple of problems. I, and I, I think a lot of our, our angst or, or difficulty is we end up with, why isn't anybody doing this? And I think there's kind of two answers. One of them is delegated authority. Um, who gets to say, okay, well, we're just going to do it this way. Um, you know, I'm the person who, just, who has decided that for everybody. Um, and then the other one is kind of resourcing. It's, it's like, uh, you know, I think there are people here who could spend 10 hours a week um, doing communications or, you know, whatever, except that they don't have 10 hours a week because they need to do other stuff to make ends meet. Um, so I, we're, this is a bootstrap problem partly because, you know, we, we can't delegate authority until we have, you know, some kind of structure under which to delegate it. We don't have resources to, uh, allocate, but we need to be up and running so that we can get those things. And, you know, it's a chicken and egg bootstrapping problem. So I kind of acknowledge that, but I think we're, we're, we've bumped into that for you know a while now, and it's this right here is a good example of something where we actually just need somebody to sit down and do it for more hours per week than you know a, a few somebody's to sit down and do stuff for more hours than they have been doing. And you know, I I can do some of that. I can volunteer for communications. It means that I'm going to be doing less of other things, less of other things for Meta Project, and less of other things for me. Um, so, um, I, I think Pete, the, Pete, what's... the, so then the delegated authority thing is really interesting to me. My, all along my, so I talk about the decentralization and sovereigns, right? So, um, a cool thing about delegation of authority in a sovereign is it's hidden inside the sovereign. 
So there's a sovereign that's one people or five people or, or 100 people. Internally, they have to figure that out, and it's a difficult problem. But externally, all you, you, have, a, you, know, you have contracts with the sovereign. Hey, um, can you do this? The sovereign says, yes, I can do this. Here's, you know, here's what the resources I need for that. Um, and either they, they do it or they don't do it, and, and you cure it somehow, right? Um, uh, we have, I, I have metaphorically taken my foot off the gas of that whole discussion about decentralization and sovereigns and stuff like that, because it makes sense in, in some, con it, it makes sense to people in some contexts and in other contexts, it sounds like crazy talk, um, which I get, I get that it's a hard concept and a weird concept. And, you know, it's especially for an individual, it's like, how do I plug in, Pete? You know, I, I want to be a sovereign, but I'm just uh, one person, you know, that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I, I can work through those issues, but, you know, it's because I have 30 years of experience doing entrepreneurial stuff. It's not because it, it's not an easy thing to, to, to do, and I get that. So we have kind of, over the past few months, I feel like, from my point of view, I feel like we have kind of restructured and kind of let that slide a little bit because it's hard to hard to think of even and hard to enact and we're doing something different now which is we're kind of squishily coming into place where there's a thing called Lionsburg or a thing called the medic project or a thing called all the projects together whatever that is where we're talking about uh in this you know in this uh in this document we've got a list of you know, the updates from all the different teams, right? Um, so each of those teams is a sovereign? Is it a subdivision of meta project? Who do they report to? How do they get their delegated authority to tell another team what to do? You know, all of that kind of stuff is, I think, up in the air. Um, at least for me, from my, my perspective, I don't see how the, all of that stuff connects. Um, and I'm not surprised by that. It's a bunch of volunteer people trying to do stuff together, right? But, but when it comes to push comes to shove, you know, the communication team says, uh, uh, okay, resourcing team, you have to report out in these certain ways. Um, uh, and, you know, the res resourcing team says, well, I don't want to. What happens, right? Um, or, or even worse, and this is kind of what Wendy said, right? Um, uh, social architecture team would love to take on the on communications, except we have to take um, the the piece off the board that's onboarding and put on the communications. And do you want that? And how do we how do we square that circle? Right? We don't we don't have enough resources to square that circle. We don't have enough hours in the week of people working. So there you go. <laughs> Okay, Pete, in your uh, hypothesized answer or interim solution that would work for the next three to six months? Uh, shoot, I was really hoping I could just say, here's the problem. I, I have <laughs> Here, it, it's in I'll your wait. lab, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I have a proposed solution, but I'll wait. There's two other hands up. My proposed okay. solution is, uh, is funding, Re resource some things. So pay somebody to do social architecture work and make sure that social architecture has enough resources to get um, on yeah, onboarding to concerns that. and communication concerns worked, you know. And the, another solution is to kind of muddle through the way we've been doing, um, which is going to be painful. Um, but it, it may be a, a way that we can do it. And, and it's probably the right answer is probably a combination, right? So there's, there's probably yeah. some things that have aligned energy moving anyway and are okay. Other things that don't have aligned energy and we need to hire somebody unless, you know, we find another. So, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Vincent had his hand up first. Um, I'll pass. I think that was from before. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, Vincent, so you've got your interim answer on getting things on the wiki, which is Jonathan's going to help for the next couple of weeks, and then our wiki team will, will get back. Um, does that work for you okay, Vincent, to resolve what you're saying? Yep, that's fine. Okay, and then over the next three weeks, we'll make that better. Um,
I'm going to make sure I don't know clear answer how non-wiki participants can hold in information. Okay, Bill? Is that Phil or Bill? Phil Stein. Phil. Yes, excellent. It's actually Steam, but most people have Steam. Stein, so. Okay. It's all right. Um, yes, uh, first time commenter, long time listener today. Um, thank you. So um, I think what I'm gleaning from this chat is that we need, um, we're kind of getting to the point where the, the rubber hits the road, right? And I think uh, I have been kind of off and on the last few weeks. I don't know if anybody else has this thing where it feels like you should have done 20 things and you can't figure out which one it is just for work. And it just seems like that cloud has hovered for like six months. So my mind's in like a fog, but I, I, I really like to concentrate on this, especially with some of the education projects that, that you mentioned, Jordan, um, that I could potentially play kind of a larger role in as this moves forward as kind of pilot strategies or processes. So um, I, I would love to get my hands more into um, the inner workings of uh, Meta. And I don't know how best to do that, but it seems like Pete was kind of reaching out for someone to actually put or more, more people to uh, kind of uh, put a, a stake uh, down and saying, you know, I'm in. So I, uh, I will do that. And I'm not sure how it's best served, but um, I want to throw that out there. Thanks, Phil. I really appreciate that commitment. The block time helps a lot. Um, so I think this, so we, so we now have some number of people and Phil's um, another great example of people willing to spend block time and wanting to make sure that's in the best and highest way. Um, so social architecture, <laughs> I think we have a massive duty to, for, to figure out the basic way we provide clarity. Um, so Phil, uh, if, if nothing else, just, you know, you, you should send me a text every three days until you're clear on that. Um, and when that gets annoying enough, um, we'll have a way to solve it. Done. Would you, be, would you be willing to do that? All right. Thank you. That would be helpful. Yes. Wendy. So I think this is actually a perfect, thank you, Phil, perfect example of, of what I was going to say, which is um, there is a third way, and and I think it was Jordan that already mentioned it, third way to keep moving and moving faster and scaling up that isn't, I, I admit, may not be as traditional and definitely doesn't really work well within the hierarchical structure, but I think works very well within the collaborative structure which is listening to where people are already excited and stuff is moving anyway, right? So that we get a combination of what's already really alive for people, right? Phil, come in and say, I'm happy to be your project manager on you know, technology. He said, I wanna work on the education piece, which does two things in my mind. It says we have somebody else in the education space who is, a lot, who is here, ready to commit time and energy, curious, interested, and wants to, wants to get involved. And I lost the second thing. Um, oh yeah, so if in, it creates a question in my mind, right? Is who else is ready to move forward on that piece? And if Phil is alone in our community, then we say, hey, Phil, that's great. Thank you so much. We're not quite ready, but we'll be ready. And you know, let's check back in with you in a, in a, in a couple months. And if Phil, you know, and then, and then the conversation progresses from there. If we find five other people going, oh, I've been waiting for this moment. Yes, can we finally focus on this piece? Then we know we move forward and people are willing to, because they're excited, they're willing to do work that is slightly outside of their skill set or talent or something that because the project itself is so alive for them. And I yeah. think this is when we talk, you know, sometimes we've used the phrase low hanging fruit. We're not taking advantage of that right now because we don't even know where the low hanging fruit is. So the last piece I wanna share is we could be clearer even in where we're currently committed and where we feel there's a resonance potentially, potential possibility inside of Meta Project to advance it, right? So I'm, you know, I could say I'm committed to working on the master flow I'm doing that work anyway, because this is advancing my, my purpose of being on this planet. 
And I'm hoping it will also serve Meta Project and happy to work with other people inside of Meta Project if they want to work with me on the master flow at any part and any stage in any piece. Right. And so I think that delineation also helps the group. Right. I'm not saying, as Pete was clarifying earlier with Massive Wiki, I'm not saying the whole group needs to use Miro or that they have to reference the master flow all the time. I'm saying that's where I'm committed and I'm continuing to advance it. And it's an offering into Meta Project. Um, I think that also helps these conversations as, as you know, it could be time. I'm willing to commit X amount of time in this area. It could be phrased in multiple different ways, but just offering yeah. that up as a middle ground. Judy? I was just going to circle back a little bit. If we want information coming from all of the groups, it would be helpful for us to, in the social architecture, some other area, template categories, types of information and where it then moves to. Because if we don't have people if it's sort of happenstance, we won't get the quality of information that we could get by just a little bit of focus with the team. You know, we need to know A or B or C. We especially want to be able to share that, or we want to know what you need to share that we haven't thought of. Some of those process questions would help us build out the actual flow process into one that's perpetuated by the energy and capabilities of the people, but not so loosely organized that it's impossible to maintain and find things. Perfect. Yeah, and can I just jump back in, Judy, to, to complete the thought there as well, which is this is the perfect kind of feedback that social architecture could then give to say the tech working group, right? To say, hey, that profile form that we put together is great. Could we make it even better by doing these things, which will help us understand what people's pieces are or and, and on the project form? Right to work then collaboratively together. That's exactly what we need to be doing, in my in my opinion. There's another piece that I think might belong in architecture also, but I'm not sure. Back to the question of the actual working of the group and the process flow, in order to have the teams sort of know how to surface critical issues, what's done and dusted, what's in progress but we don't need help, what's a critical issue and it has time sensitivity, that kind of triage as an expectation of a meeting that we're gonna surface these topics quickly so they can be shared, then we can dig into the meat of what we're doing, I think would be another dimension that we might wanna consider. Yep, okay, beautiful. So, so Judy, I think that's, I think we'll nail that if we, if we can get a meeting together on the process side of communication, we can differentiate the, out those different types, create basically the, yeah, the templates that you talked about and then talk about how that information flows. It's beautiful. Wendy? Um, I'm going to throw in what's called a left-hand move here. I think one of the issues that we haven't yet faced, and this is sort of on the sort of level that Pete, Rock, that Pete threw in, is that we don't have a theory of change at all sitting behind what's going on for us. You know, with all these issues, with what's happening inside, um, you know, what Meta Project is trying to achieve. There is so much more instability in all of the situations we're trying to address with our technology and our energy, yep. that makes sense. Um, and, you know, if you, if you want to have an impact on real issues worldwide, you've got to be able to map the things that are unstable against the things that are where you can actually put some effort, which is, I guess, the, the piece that I wanted to take in here. So we're talking about putting structures in place, making a lot of assumptions around how stable we can be as individuals in agreeing on things or how stable the people we want to work with are. Um, and those assumptions will trip us up. <laughs> so, you know, if you, if, and, and that's really, um, there are techniques to deal with this. But if we don't address that, you assume that you can just do X and you get Y. And underneath that are a whole lot of assumptions about how we work. I mean, and Wendy, um, you know, with the, um, the mapping that you're doing about wisdom, that's a meta piece which will come very deeply from you. And there will be a lot of other versions of that, that if I sat down and did my own one, there'd be some synergy, but neither of us can actually represent what 
thousands and millions of other people do and say, and that's what we need to be able to work towards doing. So I would urge us to start really thinking about getting the tools of complexity under our belt as a group, as a as and change leading change. Um, because we can't do that for ourselves. We have a, a first order problem. Um, we can't agree on different things and see things the same way in our group and work out why that's a challenge for us and be really clean about that and the mechanics of that, then it's going to be very difficult for us to be able to work effectively with other people who've got some of the same limitations in other groups. Big rock, sorry. <laughs> Wendy, have you, um, so we're coming up to an interesting inflection point and then I'm gonna, so I, I wanna quickly respond to what you say, said and then I'm gonna um, take five minutes to quickly introduce um, this idea of a six week schedule. And then I'm gonna, uh, with anybody that wants to help, I'll, I'll fold this back in so we still kind of stay on track this week. Um, so Wendy, do you have a, so Wendy, I would like to say to you that I deeply value and appreciate um, what you're advocating for. Every time you bring it up, it resonates. Is there a place that I would be able to see what you would consider the basic tools of complexity or ninja training we would need to get under our belts at this point? Um, in order to have you feel like that was being addressed and on steady state as, as we progressed. And if not, I'd like to offer just to, to meet one-on-one -on -one for an hour for us to work on that together to try to think through and articulate what that would be to where we would have kind of a written one or two pager that if we enacted, it would take care of kind of the um, standpoint that you're representing. Um, so you've sort of offered two alternatives. Um, I think it's actually um, leads towards being not a curriculum, but it's an entry point for us as change makers, which probably comes back to not just one source. I mean, I've, I favor a couple, um, but if I say it's emergent is the phrase we should always be coming back to. There's always things that we are not seeing and those come in and out of resolution. So um, from a leadership perspective, happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one, and I can give you a couple of things that will lead into it, that conversation. Um, okay. And then I think as a group, we don't have to follow one particular approach, but there is so much more instability and choice with that instability, real, real opportunity just to steady little parts of the map. Um, and, you know, some of those things are, are things like social media and such, where, you know, you get people, whole thousands and millions of people going down funny little tropes that are just not helpful. Um, so we can find places where things are stable enough for us to make a change. Um, and we need to really decide as a group, and this is where the change part of that goes. So I don't know that I'm exactly answering your question. Your two things are one, yes, as a, a leader, this would be helpful to create an entry point for people who work with us to appreciate the diversity of situations and how some of them need to be handled in different ways to others. And then the third point, I guess, would be to make sure that we move in our library of opportunities towards something that helps us map the dynamics of this, because we need to be able to spot that there's a lot of energy in regen or that there's a lot of our own our projects that we've got, and I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking um, list, Jonathan, no, is that, I'm just trying to get all, all my names right. Um, some of you I know quite well. Um, so I'm thinking, oh, Jason, he's got a great hotspot um, in his area of really going projects and they're sort of low hanging fruit for us. Um, and the fourth thing, which probably comes up one level is some sort of theory of change about you know where we can put our energies to make a difference because if you're trying to to you know put all your 10 fingers around around everything and get that right in the world you're not going to get the sequence that we could actually 
um, support others to go through. If you put one yeah. figure against yeah. this particular thing, which then enables other things, then you can get this whole um, Tetris of stuff happening because the energy is right. Yeah, so yeah, 100%. Yeah, identifying this. If I was to say, to give that a summary, is if we're pretending to ourselves that we can sequence what we need to do, do A, then B, then C, without taking these things into account, we'll put our efforts in the wrong place and not be effective. I think that would be the outcome that I would expect. Um, and okay, yeah, and there's a lot of so, hidden dealing with. Wendy, if you want to ping me on Mattermost, why don't, why don't we have a working session and see if we can um, articulate something together that would be helpful and, and kind of cover this, this realm of the field. It would be okay, gonna... It will fit into onboarding and such, and that because the more people we include in this, the harder we, it gets to come back to these original points of, we've just got to deal with complexity and some, some stuff's uncomfortable, et cetera. So Mattermost is a good starting point and see what okay, we can do. It doesn't have to be messy, but it, I'm going, to, I'm going to quickly share with our um, two, two minutes remaining one of the things I wanted to introduce today and move towards um, that we use on complex projects to keep people aligned and I think it might be helpful. Um, so I'm just going to introduce this and instead of us working on this as a group like I wanted to, um, I'll work with Phil. <laughs> this is uh, your first assignment, sir. I'll work with Phil, um, who's, who's very versed in this, to take the full planning and our conversation today, which I think highlights some, some very key emergent side issues that we need to act on and get into this format. And then we'll just uh, take the group through it and, and start using it in practice. But I wanna just introduce it so you're not surprised when you see it. This is what we call an um, AC, a six week look ahead schedule. And as you can see, there's, there's six weeks here. Um, the idea is to stay present in the current week, like where this line would be on Wednesday, uh, August 31st. You can see where we are here. You have a view of last week, so you can see what actually happened last week. And then you have a look ahead of the coming four weeks, so you can see approximately what's coming. And then you'll see a lot of times on these, there's a lot more detail on the next two weeks. So for instance, in Scrum, usually you're very, you're very, or in Agile, you're very focused on these kind of two week cycles. That's where the detail is. I like pulling in a couple of weeks beyond that so people can kind of see what's coming and prepare. But what happens is on these different headings, you divide out these different features of work. So there's, um, you know, this is clearing, this is embankment, this is detention basins, this is underground, riprap, structures, et cetera. So you have all these different things that are happening in parallel, usually with different teams. And then each of those gets broken down. So you can see detention basins is broken down. So you end up with kind of this hierarchy of action that stacks up so everybody can see how things are moving. Um, I'm going to do my best just this week to um, do the heavy lift of trying to get um, pull planning, a couple different work groups together, um, and get them all roughly structured into this type of a view that then we can start updating on a regular basis. And if we couple kind of the minimum communication flows that um, we talked about procedurally with some visual representations like this, um, with one level out looking at the, the higher level critical path that we're moving, um, I think those pieces will really illuminate a lot and be a very concrete working tool that we can start to work with. Um, so, so we're out of time. I was going to um, try to introduce the group to kind of how we, how we work with these, um, but it, it'll probably be, I think what happened is perfect. Um, this was, I just wanted to introduce this today and that still got done and probably most useful is I'll just present it back and then we'll, we'll see how it works as a, as a tool for the group. So, okay, beautiful. That was super, super rich discussion that clarified, I think for us, um, some really key leverage points that we could advance over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to try to do a better job of following up and, and getting the different teams moving um, this week so we can act on those. Super, super grateful for everyone here. And I guess it's learning how to do what hasn't been done before and figure this out. It's um, amazing. And I'm just super grateful. Um, I'm sorry that that conversation was not more inclusive. I feel like there's multiple people on the call who didn't um, share today. Um, and so I apologize, uh, Trey, 
so great to see you here. Thank you for dropping in. Um, added Winfinity to the little partnership uh, pipeline, and I hope you don't mind and love to um, explore what you guys are doing and how to fold it in. Jason, thank you for, for being here. Kilu, our thoughts are with you. Um, I've been praying for you since your text, so hope you're doing okay. And uh, yeah, really great to see everybody today. So, all right, well, lots moving. Thank you so much for just the patience and heart to hang in there and learn how to do this together. And hopefully all the pieces are going to start to weave and invisible becomes visible. And at that point, it'll be a lot easier. So thanks for, thanks for the heavy lift. Let's stop, share, love and appreciate everybody. Um, we'll do with it. Whoever wants to, we'll do a quick retro um, here. So feel free to jump if you need to with anybody that wants to stay on, do a little retro of the call. Um, maybe create some action items for next week. So, all right, with that, we will um, wrap the real meeting and start the retro meeting. Maybe just just take a uh, just take two minutes to breathe here. Oh. Oh. All right, cool. Well, before we dive into the retro, um, let's see. I don't think we got to hear from Trey or Jason. Trey, do you have any, any thoughts you'd like to share reflections? If not, no worries. Just wanted to invite since we were chatting the whole time. I'm just grateful to be able to connect back into the energy. Um, I'm literally just landed in my new home in the last week and a half after moving my parents after 51 years living in the same, in one house, moving them, downsizing them and moving them into a senior's home. It's been quite an intense time <laughs> for the entire family. And, uh, and I'm just grateful to be connecting back in the energy. Thank you for having me. Awesome. I love the color in the background and the art. It looks so peaceful. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you for that. And Jason, just wanted to. Yeah, I just Wait. jumped on about uh, 10 minutes ago. So. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I was, I was going to just listen in a little bit on the retrospective to catch some things up. Um, we've had a, a, last week was a strive to thrive um, community effort as part of our community visioning in our community. <laughs> so. Um, we had about 30 different uh, events take place last week. Um, we did a presentation on uh, generative economies and generative business um, alongside the chief scientist for Kimberly Clark and a guy out at MIT in Boston that's doing work in a nonprofit related to well being economies. So um, there'll be a Zoom at some point. There'll be some kind of, uh, you know, if anybody wants to look at it, I can put it in the you know, into that, whatever the Lionsburg thing is. So I want to look at it, um, but that, and I got to DJ the uh, closing ceremony area. So I got to do two <laughs> parts of my, um, parts of my passion. So, um, but it's been really busy leading up to, so I've been kind of bouncing in and out um, and my September's kind of really crammed too, but I'm going to do the best I can to hold as much space as I can for this. That's great. What, do you have a uh, DJ name, Jason? It's a DJ Dom. DJ D -O -M. Dom. Yes. Fantastic. All right. DJ Dom. Love it. Thanks for sharing that. Appreciate that. Okay. Awesome. Before we go to retro, um, did anybody else just have anything that um, wasn't able to get spoken in before the top of the hour that we could just take a, a minute for here? Um, I'd like to, um, maybe the map that I prepared, uh, prepared and such will sort of turn up in our conversation. So, I can sort of get your guidance on where we might put that in. Um, but I do think in terms of the order of things, the communication is definitely one thing. And the other thing is the assumption of order is the other thing. And those two things actually fit one with the other. So yeah, I think personal view is we, we start to fail by not paying attention to these things. So hopefully um, I've only just put a little bit of effort in. Um, I can reach some things afterwards once we agree. Okay, so um, 
this back out. Get my notes back up. Okay, so um, I'm going to make sure I add to the issue log here, Wendy. Um, so you said in addition to communication, which we talked about, you called it assumption of order. And then um, I guess, Wendy, if we, I guess the best way would be for us to just follow up. If, so if we could schedule a one-on-one -on -one this week, we could talk about all these things, we could fold it in and then take time to introduce it to the group. Would that be okay? Yeah. And um, I think it's, it would be critical to do that sooner rather than later, just to steady what we do together and make sure that we're really very realistic with what we can achieve. Okay. So on uh, the, the next, tomorrow I have some slots. I don't know if you have any slots, um, but so either tomorrow or probably Tuesday, I'm gonna be out of town over the weekend. So if you wanna just ping me on Mattermost or whatever, um, we can, can see. Okay, great. Jonathan, and then we'll, we'll start a retro. Uh, to the point about communication, uh, I noticed there were uh, a number of topics and questions that arose today for which there's already effort and material. And so I invite people to look uh, in the community part of the wiki for uh, places where they wanna add their ideas and questions. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, Jonathan, well, uh, maybe with the communications group, we'll try to make that more visible and easy for people to know where to go and how to follow along. So. Okay, great. So let's let's start our retro. Um, oh, Pete, would you would you be okay lifting just for like five minutes, just to kind of get us kicked off? Uh, sure thing. Uh, let's change it a little bit this week, not too much. Um, I think waterfalls work pretty well, especially when we're maybe a little bit constrained on time. Um, uh, how about if we do one called uh, "I like," "I wish," "I wonder." Um, uh, so uh, we'll go through those one at a time. Um, so why don't we do take two minutes uh, and uh, write up uh, what I liked about this call. What did we do well that we should continue? You want us to write these in the chat, Pete, or just? Uh... Uh, I can do it. Oh, yeah. Um, I think, what do we think? I, I like uh, waterfalls where we all hit return at the same time. I don't know if that's good or bad. Okay. But... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's try that. And so then the trick is not to hit return until you're ready. Until Jordan says. You can use uh, control return to get a wine break. Or, or use a different program. Pete, I tried that once and it didn't work because I think it works on a, a Mac, but on an Apple, I mean, on a, a Windows machine, you, it didn't work. I think it's Alt Enter. But I, I tried that and it just posted it right away. Um, I do Control Enter on a, on a Mac. Not uh, Alt he, or he, not, not Option. He's on a, he's on a um, PC. Ah, so then it's probably alt on, on a yeah, PC, yeah. You could do a little test, Bill. All right, so another minute. What did we like? Um,
How are we feeling? Good. Three, two, one, go. All right, beautiful. Uh, hey, Pete, you're still up. Oh. Um, I think I think we'll just let people read through those and uh, move on to I wish. Yeah. Trey, sorry, we're great. we're kind of used to the rhythm here. Um, it it was made sense that we did them separately. Um, but thanks for thanks for putting yours all together. Um. So next one is I wish. Uh, I wish we, during this call, did something differently, did did something that we didn't do, um, maybe didn't do something that we did do. So next one. All right. How are we doing? Minute more. <laughs> Minute more. Beautiful.
Those are beautiful, beautiful wishes. Ooh, good one, Vincent. We'll go there next. All right, I wonder, let's do I wonder, and then let's uh, let's answer Vincent's prayer. You know no, about, I, wonder, uh, I wonder what would happen if we dot, dot, dot. That's a great prompt. All right, how are we doing on our wonderings? All right, ready? Five, four, one, go. Those are really good wonderings and really good wishes. This is a great way to wrap the meeting. <laughs> yeah, this is really, really. Pete, I thought this was really effective today. The quality of what came out was really, really high. I'd love to copy this into the, or would that be okay uh, procedurally yeah. to copy this last section in? Yeah. Mattermost. Uh, yeah. That would be great. Into Mattermost yeah, this... or into HackMD? Or sorry, into HackMD. I apologize. So there are some really strong. One thing that's neat is this is all pointing to where we need to go, but it seems like there's a really strong theme about needing more, which is really great, right? Uh, like there's a couple of key things around communication and coordination and time and space to allow for the fullness of this to emerge. Um, and then Trey, I love your comment that tied in with Pete's comments and Bill's comments on wouldn't it be nice if this wasn't just a side thing, but if it actually contributed to the core of what was on the center of our desk every day rather than the side. Um, so I think there's this idea that 
there's some percentage of our time we're spending on the highest and most meaningful things that we think have the most potential and some things we're spending time on to make ends meet, make money. And it would be fun to figure out how to turn that dial progressively to do less and less of the lower impact things and more and more to have these things take the center. Okay, so let's spend, uh, would everybody be okay spending the next eight minutes kind of talking about the coming week? And in light of all this, uh, it's so beautiful. All right, so I guess I'm gonna go down to the very bottom of this all. section called the coming week. Maybe I should share my screen for this section. All right. I guess instead of me speaking in light of what our, our wishes and wonders and those kind of things and our um, deep conversation. We have a quick, quick few minutes here. So um, yeah, just let's just create space um, for what's what's most important to people based on what came out today. Okay, so I agree with that. Schedule a communications team meeting. Jordan plus maybe others to create a draft six week schedule. Hi, Keila. Uh, let's see, Kilu, we can't we can't hear you. We can't hear you. for some reason your volume's not your doesn't look like you're on mute, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Um an idea, what about if somebody suggested letting ourselves or each other know what's been happening before the each next meeting? I'm wondering if very short video or voice messages would work, if you can convey much more in that than you know, unit of text, which would be pages and pages, or do both. Anyway. So you're, su you're suggesting maybe um, just quick couple minute voice memos or something from anybody that wanted to share just key, key connection pieces yeah. to kind of. Yeah, because I think somebody mentioned into the what if or, or somewhere that if we were to know before the next meeting, you know, what is emerging, what we're dealing with, and so on. I mean, we can do it in writing too, but it might get kind of long. I think the idea of the short clip is very constructive because it takes the burden of putting pen to paper off everybody's desk <laughs> or keys to the keyboard as it would be. But. I think that's a really good idea too. Pete and I have talked that as well. We'll have to think about how to do that without having people feeling like there's a backlog or they're falling behind. So maybe we could have somebody kind of summarize those and present them out. Um, that could be viewable. That, that sounds hard, Jordan. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, hard. Thinking, I'm actually thinking that if those were done, not the day before the meeting, but maybe three or four days before the meeting, midweek between the meetings, then people could perhaps help with whatever the issue is the person's dealing with and it would already be resolved by the next Wednesday. Um, so there's a dynamic aspect to it. It's not just teeing it up to review as a group, 
it's yeah. we're live kind of like your coworker just bumped into something in the lab that's a problem and you're going to stop and help them right then and there and it won't be a problem by Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that something where we could record, every, everybody records two or three minutes and then we put those all together and we have, I don't know, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes to watch? I think that would be preferable, Pete. Yeah, yeah. Would also assure that even a minute. That's a really cool idea, Pete. To um, instead of having a bunch of fragments, to splice those better together. You know, so each week we'd have both like the weekly, a weekly meeting or two that would be high level, and those okay. quick bullets from everybody. That would be super powerful. Jonathan. <clears throat> um, a call out to, well, I'd like to include in that um, recording things people have been letting go of because there's no traction yet. so that they don't, you know, disappear. Uh, I think people have passions and they're called to do things and uh, then they kind of get lost. So I propose to let people have a way to say, hey, I don't want this to get lost. I, I hear, I hear what, that what, what did we call that with uh, Bill Anderson, Pete? what we call that but some kind of a parking lot or uh, or a uh, backlog back or parking lot is a is often a good term because it's it, but it also means that it's available for someone else to step in and help fix before the next meeting it doesn't stay in the parking lot i like the way jonathan said it too um something mm -hmm. that uh i, I want to make sure that it doesn't get lost yeah, I agree. And and I think that would be fine in an in an update, you know. We also have some MOUs and partnership agreements that need to get advanced. Um, Estonia trip details finalized. Um, okay, Bill, it looks like, and then it looks like we're out. So Bill, you got the final word. An example, I was, I've been working on, as you know, Jordan, um, an onboarding program for companies coming into the Lionsburg um, orbit as owned entities. We're working on this as a part of something that's imminent. But when I heard people talking about the, the social onboarding, I thought, wow, this probably has some overlaps and some. Yeah, for sure. Anyway. So there may this that's an example of how we could be working on things that have synergies between them, but because we don't know about them, we're not sharing. So we're duplicating efforts unnecessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, as we work on the social onboarding the next couple of weeks, it might be worthwhile having you join the so social architecture meetings. Um, because I, I agree it has a lot of synergy with what's happening right now. Um Okay, cool. I want to honor our uh, come to the close of 2.30 here. But um, yeah, these are some of the key things that are meeting. I'm, I'll try to take these and get them into a, a little different view that might be useful and, and start to circulate that. And then we can get a little better at this fleshing in the, the details, seeing what resources are going where, all that good stuff. So 
hopefully it'll help bring it to life. Well, thank you so much. Really, really a joy and an honor to be with you today. Really appreciate the effort and the time and the attention that's going into this. It means a lot. So thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Peter, are you, are you dropping this into the wiki? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Beautiful. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. All right. See you soon.